So our next presentation uh, is taking us to the Warrabungle National Park, where we've presently got three citizen science projects running to monitor the recovery of the park post a fire. And this is the support management actions going forward. So for those of you who haven't been lucky enough to visit Warrabungle National Park, it's located near Coona Barabin. A lot of people don't know where that is. So it's about seven hours northwest of Sydney. Uh, the park is host to captivating volcanic geology, which you can probably see above me, but it also is a range, uh, has diverse flora and fauna, and a lot of people travel there to go camping and hiking. Unfortunately, in January 2013, a fire devastated the park, burning nearly 90%. Um, however, through the park's management fire recovery actions, it provided an opportunity not only to involve the community, but to embed not one but three citizen science projects to collect data and support those management actions. The first project off the rank is Warren Bungle Snap, so I just referred to that in the last presentation. But this is used to uh, record, use images to monitor vegetation regrowth over a period of time. So where they're set up, we've got three photo points set up within the park, and the reason we've chosen those points is that they're able to monitor change, but they're also readily accessible and visited a lot throughout the year, so we're able to capture those images. And we're targeting park visitors for this project. So when visitors go to these particular sites, they'll see a sign like that, and that's just some of the photos that have been taken from our three sites at White Gum Lookout, Pitcham Car Park, and Wobblon Creek. And all they need to do is a, a touch hard to see, but there's an L bracket, and they just position their camera, tablet, or phone on this L bracket and take an image. And this L bracket helps keep the image height from the same height and also the same angle. Once they've taken the image, they can either upload it directly via the Warren Snap app or directly via the Warren Snap uh, website, uh, which is hosted by the Atlas of Living Australia. And these are just a couple of images that you can see. Uh, the green has changed and there's a bit of foliage change. It's I was rushed, there's heaps and heaps of images up there. We've got 187 images there. I didn't have time to go through them. And they've been taken by 147 contributors. The fires also left a lot of the park vulnerable to erosion because there was minimal mid-storey and ground cover left. Um, the way it happens in nature, a large thunderstorm followed only a month, I think, after the fire and it washed a huge amount of sediment and organic matter into the creek. And as you can see, this is two years after the fire. There was, this is Wobbleon Creek, which is a spring-fed creek. There's still a lot of sediment within it. Fortunately, a couple of years after, in a few thunderstorms, this is, oops, you can see the creek stream bed um, complexity has completely changed as the sediment has dispersed. This particular thing provided an opportunity for water quality monitoring at the park and there was the aim to water, monitor the water quality and macroinvertebrate diversity as the stream complexly changed due to sediment dispersal. We're lucky within Warrenbrungle National Park that there's an environmental education centre and we were able to leverage their strong networks that they've established over a long period of time to work with central and high schools uh, that neighbour the park. So the way we go about our business, we travel up to Warrenbrungle National Park two times a year in autumn and spring and we have students come and be involved and they work with OEH aquatic ecologists. And what they will firstly do is they'll collect nutrient samples and water quality, like pH, temperature, conductivity and dissolved oxygen. But we'll also be showing them a test of accuracy. So we'll use a more expensive scientific equipment and then get them to use the more affordable probes and strips um, just to show a comparison of uh, accuracy. And interestingly enough, because it's not always accessible to have an expensive $5,000 tool, um, the temperature and conductivity was quite similar. The other element of the project was macroinvertebrate sampling. So during the day, we would teach the students how to sample macroinvertebrates. Uh, due to the limited time of the day, though, we could only sort them to a certain level. We'd love to teach them how to go down to probably family, but we also compared the sampling ethic to the OEH staff. Since the project's inception, we've been able to work with 101 students, and that's from seven visits to the park. Uh, and the last project is the Back to Bungles Bird Week, which is being put in place to monitor bird change, uh, bird diversity change in burnt versus unburnt areas. So each year, another, normally me, which I'm pretty lucky about, 
I travel up to Warrenbungal again and I'm there for four days and I work with volunteers who are either campers or they're people who have travelled specifically to the park and it's a long way from a lot of places uh, to support the project. And during the four days we'll sample up to ten trails and the way we do it is between 8 to 1 p.m. 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. during the day and we'll only record birds that we see or hear on the way in so we don't duplicate our counts during the day. Um, since the first one, I think I might have it noted there, there's been six and the next is in April. We've recorded 5,000 observations of 111 species and there's known to be about 160 in the park. So far the bird diversity within the burnt areas is becoming a lot more similar to what's available in the unburnt but there's still species mix and abundance differences and we're presently reviewing that at the moment. So I'll just click these very quickly. But there's multiple benefits, there's multiple benefits to any citizen science project, but the three-pronged attack has allowed us to attract different audiences, be it visitors, schools or bird enthusiasts. They're all relatively cheap to run. The projects also act as an educational tool for anybody who's involved and has multiple data benefits like fire recovery data so we can see how the diversity has changed, social engagement data for the people who are involved and a lot of project learnings which we can either help adaptively manage our current projects there or future projects OEH are going to run. Thank you.